So I'm down here at the smaller miter saw in the lower shop. I think I mentioned before in previous video that uh, I like this smaller miter saw a lot better for making picture frames. It's just a little bit more manageable. It also has a work stop. The other one has a work stop too, but this one works a little better for picture frames. So I'm going to miter a couple of frames and show you uh, how that's going to work. Uh, the trick to mitering isn't really the cut, although there are a couple of tips I would give you. Um, one being that when you cut, I would have the front of the frame up. That way the blade hits that first and you get the cleanest cut there. If it chips anything, it chips a little out of the back, but uh, normally that doesn't happen. But I like to have my cut start on the front of the frame where I know I want my tightest, um, my, my tightest joint to be. Um, and, and that way if it does wiggle around a little bit, I can always put a little filler in the back of the frame rather than have to fill the front. Uh, if you're making a four-sided frame, then you're cutting everything at a 45 degree angle. 45 plus 45 equals 90, they tell you you get a right angle. So that's, that's your miter measurement, and there's a nice automatic click in place uh, setting for 45 on this saw. Now something that you're gonna have to keep in mind is all of those angles need to point in towards the inside of the frame, so you have to plan that. If you cut it the wrong direction, your frame is gonna be inside out. <laughs> you don't want that. All right, so the first thing that I can do is cut the ends of two boards so that I'm ready to start cutting things to length. So that's easy enough to do. I can just pick two decent ends of the board and cut them. And what I want to make sure is that, like I said, the 45 degree angle is coming in towards the thin part of the style. So that means that I should be cutting this direction not the other way around. I'll show you on the saw. Now normally I would tell you to turn on the, the other vacuum that's down here before you start using this saw, uh, but I don't want to have to turn it on and off constantly while I'm talking on the video, so I'm going to go ahead and just go for it, and then I'll use the shop back a little bit later. So, like I said, to start off, I'm just going to take the corner off of each of these boards so that I have a miter to measure from. There's one. Aha. Okay. So I'm going to run into the air tank if I go that direction. So all I have to do is switch the direction of the saw. It's a little funny to cut with the wrong hand, but I feel comfortable. My hand's in a safe distance from the blade. Go ahead and do it. Now you see that? That is gonna make you have the wrong measurement, that gap. I want my board to be all the way against this fence. Now my thumb is okay here. It is not anywhere near the blade. I feel safe holding my thumb there. I would not wanna put my thumb there. Remember, these are very useful. Okay, now I have two points to measure from. Okay, so the frames that I want to make out of this wood are 12 by 16 inches. Or I should say the thing that I'm framing is 12 by 16 inches. So I want to see 12 by 16 inches of space on the inside of the frame. But that means that the outer dimensions have to be longer. So I am going to measure 12 inches or well on this piece I'm going to do 16 so I'm going to measure over 16 inches from the inside of my miter and I'm going to make a mark and to remind myself that that cut needs to go the other direction I will go ahead and make a little pencil line as a reminder now I have to switch the saw direction Okay, so the easiest way to cut on a mark like this after you've made it is to slowly bring the blade down until you see that that blade is gonna touch exactly where you want it to touch. And then once you have it ready, you hold the piece in place and you go ahead and make your cut. So now I have my first piece of frame stock and it's mitered properly at either end. The miters come in towards the center and my opening it's 16 inches. 
Now I can just repeat that over and over again. But again, the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is trim this end off because it's going the wrong direction. This is a good point to notice when you measure out your materials, if you know you're gonna miter something, always give yourself a little bit extra because you lose a certain length on that cut every time you cut the miter away. So I'm gonna go ahead and miter these pieces and then I'll have my frame stock ready. Now, one way that you can easily make pieces the same size is to line them up like this and make your two marks. And again, I like to remind myself which direction those marks are supposed to go. As you can see, those frames were, profile was opposite there. Gluing this picture frame together is going to be relatively the same process as the box. I've laid out my pieces and I've laid out my band clamp and I have all the same materials gathered. Um, the first thing that I want to do though is I want to make absolutely sure that both sides are the exact same size. Because if they're slightly off, I could go trim them right now, but once I glue this together, I can't fix it. And um, if they're different sizes, then, they're gonna, then the frame will be out of square and most people will notice that. So I have two, two sets of pieces that are the exact same size. They're paired up, and now I'm ready to glue it together. Now, remember, you just need glue in the four joints, so you don't have to pick up all four pieces. You can do two and two. So I'm gonna put a generous glob of glue on those two corners, on these two corners. I'm just picking the short pieces because they're easier to, to deal with. Then I'm gonna, now you'll notice that I have the frame sitting uh, basically upside down. Um, I'm looking at the back of the frame and I'm gonna fix that in a minute. Now one problem I'm gonna have here is that my band, my band clamp is just a little bit thicker than my frame. So when I get it close to where I want it, what I'm gonna do is just bring it over here to the edge of the table and that way I can kind of maneuver it around a little bit. That's pretty good. If you have good miters, once you pull this clamp tight, it should be relatively square all the way around. Of course, that's the tricky part there. If you ever do this and that clamp won't stay closed, an easy thing to do is just put a little tiny spring clamp on it. Okay, so now I have a little glob of glue here that's gonna be a real problem when I try to frame a, put a picture in there, it would cause a bump. So I'm gonna wipe that out of there. Make sure that for the most part, the excess glue is wiped out of the way on the back side of the frame here. And then, since the clamp is holding it together so nicely, I can flip it over. And if you notice here, this doesn't line up very well. So I'm gonna just use my thumb if I can and try to move those pieces so that that corner matches up. There. All right, that's better. So that's pretty flush. The other four corners are relatively flush. I want it close enough that I can sand it when I'm done and not have to have a nightmare of a time sanding it or sand it so much that I lose integrity. Because remember, these styles are pretty thin because this is a small frame. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think I can fix that up later. So now I'm gonna try to clean as much glue off of the front of this frame as I can. So that that residue isn't showing up later. Not only is it hard to sand glue off of wood like this, but it is also very difficult to paint over it. Well paint, you can paint over it. You couldn't stain over it. That would show up. But I'm gonna have to do some sanding on this frame later anyway. I've got some saw marks, some imperfections that I'm gonna to need to fix up. The last thing I wanna do, I'm gonna flip my paper over so there's not a bunch of glue in the way. And then I'm gonna just make sure that this frame is flat, meaning that it is lying flat on the table and not wrapped. 
I can also eyeball it it's a little bit off. I think it's going to be okay. At this point, there's not a whole lot I can do except set it up on something to dry. Check it out tomorrow. Now, once this dries, what I will do is I will shoot a couple nails in the corners just for safety, and then I will sand it all up and probably paint it. Then I'll have to cut the backing board and cut a piece of plexiglass to fit, and I'll have myself a frame. Okay, so it's the next day, and as you can tell, I have taken the clamps off of this uh, picture frame, and it's pretty solid. It's a little bit, little bit warped from corner to corner, but uh, nothing terrible, and it does flex, so I think it'll be okay. I have some gaps on the corner here, which I would fill using this Durham's Rock Hard wood putty. Um, which is powdered so all you do is pry the top off with a screwdriver and you just need a little tiny bit I usually put it in like a paper cup and you mix it up with a little bit of water Until it is the consistency that you want. I usually like mine to be like a soft putty and then you can Squeeze it in the cracks either with a little putty knife or even with your thumb and Then you let it dry and when it's all dry you can sand it all flat And so I wait to do any sanding until my putty has dried um, but before I do any of that, I'm going to go ahead and just put a couple little nails in the corner, a, a nail in each corner of this frame. So I've gotten out the air nailer here, and uh, there's another video that I've done where I show how to use the air nailer. So if you're thinking of doing this, please watch the air nailer video uh, before you come to do this kind of project. But just for a little recap. This is the air hose. I've already set it up to be at about 90 PSI, which will probably be fine for this. I have nails in the gun, which are pretty small. I don't need a very long nail. So I'm going to put this in there by pulling the collar back, and now it's ready to go. It will not fire a nail until this tip is depressed, and then once I depress the tip against wherever I want to shoot the nail and pull the trigger, the nail will come out. Now, here's the trick with frames is I only have this much wood to nail into so when I shoot my nail I want to make sure that it's far enough close enough to the corner that it'll grab that I don't want it to come poking out here I also want it to go in straight so it doesn't come out the side there we go it's pretty simple now I could also putty those nail holes I want it. Notice I'm keeping my hand far enough away that the nail's never going to be able to come flying out anywhere and, and get me. And you can't see, but I'm wearing my safety glasses. Just in case. All right. So that frame is done and ready to be puttied, sanded, painted or finished, and I can use it. <laughs> 